I figured out something super cool yesterday, and that's how to get a camera angle into a shader. The original methods I used to use were Fresnel and layer weight, and the new method is using a vector transform node. So I'll quickly go over the old method. Basically, Fresnel and layer weight are very similar. There are these nodes that give you a value from zero to one, and it basically gives you the normal or the mesh normal, and as it becomes more perpendicular to the camera, it then becomes a lower or a higher value. So for example, right here, let's go into the Fresnel. I tweak this a little bit, but you can see as this face becomes more perpendicular, it increases in value to one, and that's mixing in our transparent shader right here. So same thing is with our layer weight, and this is very helpful and useful in a lot of circumstances. And it can even do things with like large geometry where it gives you this kind of nice fade across as the normal becomes more and more perpendicular. But there is something that is really helpful for certain use cases and that's this thing vector transform. And you can see on this one, as I rotate to its side or to its back, it disappears. And this one doesn't, but this one, as I go up or I go down, it disappears. So what is this node and what's happening? If I click here, you can see it right here. By default, just so you know, vector transform will come out like this. You want to keep vector on, keep world on, and then instead of object right here, you'll switch this to camera. And then we can also play with the, the vector here in order to choose which axis we want to compare to get this value. And in general, this gives you a, a vector and X, Y, Z. So in order to do this effect with just looking at one angle, so for this one, it's the X, uh, we're basically going to just take, this, take a separate X, Y, Z and use that X. And this will actually give you a value minus one to one. And then like before, we can use a color ramp to drive it. If we want to do it with the up and down direction of the, the camera, the Z, uh, again, uh, we actually switch this vector again to be on the Z and then we'll do the separate from the Z. And again, it's from minus one to one. And here we can tweak how it comes about. And if you're going to be trying to do this with a different angle, uh, you can always do something like a combine RGB here. And you can put this like that, like so. And this can help you debug what's actually happening. So you can see on this one at the top, it's one. The back is zero, the front is zero, and then from the bottom is minus one. So you can use these values and these, these, uh, these nodes to debug and figure out exactly what you want from your color ramp. A recent project that I used this technique on is in this anime shaded character. You can see here under its lip and its nose, there's these two little lines. And if I were to actually go to the side, they instantly disappear. If they were appearing here, it would look kind of awkward. Like why are these little marks drawn on it? So it gives this really nice effect. And with this one, instead of using a color ramp, I'm using a greater than node that then basically just makes it a zero or a one. And in general, this is super helpful because, uh, let's say you have um, an object that you want to fade completely instead of just like a gradient based on the steepness of the angle. Uh, it's super great because you can, yeah, basically have the whole object fade, have the whole object change color all based on the angle rather than the specific normal in the mesh that you're putting the shader on. That's it. If you found this helpful, please drop a subscription and a like. And I'll put this file on my Patreon if you want to download it. Thank you very much.